Hi everybody, and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial of the soft tackled fly known as the Shaky Bealy. Well, if you're anything like me, you probably use all of your available resources to figure out what the best fly patterns, techniques, materials, basically any gadget related to fly tying and fly fishing may be. That's how I came across this pattern. I was looking through the Blue Ribbon Flies catalog, and they're out of West Yellowstone, Montana. They had a little write-up about this pattern that was created by one of their employees, Mr. Nick Nicholas. Well, the interesting part was that aside from this being a successful pattern, there's a great story that goes along with it. I'm not here to tell you if that story is fact or fiction. I have no idea, but I can tell you that Mr. Nicholas came up with a quite interesting one. And it goes along the lines of, in the 1940s, there was this park ranger who really loved to fish the Madison River. He would fish this fly there, and his name was Bealy. Well, either whenever he would unhook fish with this fly, or whenever he would tell stories of catching fish on this fly, he used to shake. Hence the name, the Shaky Bealy. Now again, it's a great story, but I'll just tell you a little bit more about my interactions with this fly, and they've all been positive. This is a fly that downright just catches fish. If you don't believe me, please trust the owner of Patagonia. His name is Avon Chenard and he says that this fly is easily in his top five. Now the reason it works is for a number of reasons. It definitely represents an emerger or possibly a drowned mayfly or whatever insect you're trying to imitate. You can fish it on top of the surface, in the film, directly under the surface, or even lower in the water column. I'll tell you a few ways that I like to fish this pattern. For starters, being that it is a soft tackle, I like to fish it directly above a nymph. To attach this shaky billy to my line, what I'll do is I'll add on my tippet to my leader. I'll add that on with a blood knot and I'll keep one of the tag ends of that blood knot approximately six inches. Then I'll tie that soft tackle onto that tag end and I'll tie my nymph onto the end of the tippet. A second way that I like to fish it is directly behind a dry fly. I'll tie a dry fly to the end of my tippet and then on the bend of that dry fly hook I'll add approximately eight inches of tippet and then I'll tie this soft tackle on that. The third way to fish it, and a really exciting way, is basically to fish it directly on tippet material by itself. Don't be afraid to use something like 4X because you might get some vicious takes by simply making a cast three quarters downstream. So if you're looking straight across the river and it's flowing one direction, whatever direction it's flowing, you basically will turn about 75% of the way, make a nice cast across the stream, and let that water bring your line around until it's directly below you. While it's swinging that line around, it's putting that fly in front of a lot of fish, but more importantly, it's causing that fly to rise up a little bit, just like an emerging insect. That's a great way to fish it, though you will get a lot of vicious strikes, so hold on. Now, if you are interested in seeing Mr. Nick Nicholas tie this pattern himself, please Google that and check YouTube, because as of June 2014, 2014, there is a video of him tying that pattern, and I'm changing it just a little bit. He ties his original in that, in that video. In mine, I'm going to be showing you how to basically vary the pattern just a little bit to turn it into an isonychia, otherwise known as a slate drake. All I've really done was just extend the length of the hook a bit and change some colors of the materials. It's a very easy setup. And I'll also be basically sharing a couple variations that you can also make in the tying of this pattern. So with all of that said, I'm first going to show you a picture of the finished shaky bealy list all of the tying materials, and then finally go through the procedures of this fly. All right, now that you've seen a picture of the finished fly and a list of the materials, let's start tying this pattern. I'm using a Stonfo Cayman vise. In the vise right now, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. That's their N202. It's a size 12 hook. This is a hopper and terrestrial hook, but it's got a real nice bend to it for a soft tackle, and it's a very nice shank, a little bit longer, which works out perfectly when attempting to represent this Isonychia or Slate Drake. My thread, I'm going to be using some ADOT dark brown unithread. I'm just going to tie it in place directly behind the hook eye. And next, we're going to immediately go to some crystal flash. Now, there's a couple colors that I will use for this pattern. 
The color I'm using right now is going to be more of an olive, kind of a light olive. I also do like a light brown, almost a camel color. And I'm going to pull just a small clump of fibers. By small clump, I'm talking about five, six fibers. I really don't like to go too crazy with this crystal flash, especially on trout patterns. What I'm going to do is basically tie it in the middle so I have a, a clump extending over the eye and the rest are going to be extending back. I'm going to tie back until approximately I get to the barb. Let my, my uh, thread hang and I was kind of pulling those a little taut as I was tying back. Now I'm going to let them go back to their original length and I'm going to trim them so they're just about a little bit more than half the length of the body. So we're going to tie that in just to basically represent almost a trailing shuck uh, as this, this fly is emerging. Next time I grab a Coque de Leon feather. Now this is a little bit different than what you might normally see for a tailing fiber on an Isonychia or on a um, the slate drake. Typically whenever you see nymphs of the slate drake, you'll just see almost a peacock um, a peacock sword, maybe two or three of them tied in to represent the tailing fibers. The reason I'm going to use this Coque de Leon is because we want, it to, we want to get that modeling. We want something that's going to withstand. And most importantly, when this Coque de Leon gets wet, it really just binds together. And as it moves in the water, it can almost give off that personality of just those two or three tails if that fish is really keyed in on them. I'm going to grab a nice healthy clump of these. And I want them to extend just past those crystal flash fibers. Gonna lock them in, and I am actually gonna run my thread up and back just to build up the body a hair, not a lot, but just a little bit. I wanna trim just the tag ends of those tailing fibers. I don't wanna trim this crystal flash yet. And the next thing I'm going to do is add in my ribbing. Now I'm going to be using some ultra wire. This is UTC. The color is wine. That's going to be what I'm, I'm using for my ribbing. Though I also will recommend that you use a thread, possibly a UTC again, in that wine color for the ribbing. It's up to you if you use the thread or with the wire. I'm going to be using the wire because I want this pattern to be under the surface. If you're going to be using it as a dry fly as well, then I would represent. I would rec recommend this thread ribbing instead simply because it's going to be a little easier to get the pattern to float. For me to tie my ribbing I'm just going to extend it up the hook. I'll show you I brought it up approximately 60% uh, of the way. Wrap back and now I can start applying my dubbing. In this case I'm going to be using Delaware River Club. This is their mahogany brown. It does represent the lead wing coachman, which is the done emerger stage of this Isonychia uh, bicolor. What's really neat about this dubbing is that it's got all kinds of different colors in it. Though that's why I chose this maroon for my, um, for my ribbing because I think that really does bring out some of the more natural colors of this Isonychia. I'm gonna, tie, I'm gonna dub in a typical noodle. I wanted a, a little, we'll say a little uh, more, more slender at the beginning. Then we can taper it a little bit more as we, we go on towards the, the thorax. Okay. Next, I'm going to bring up my ribbing. All right, and finally, we're going to add a really great material, if I can find mine hanging around here. And that's going to be ostrich. I really love ostrich hurl. Nick Nicholas really just 
chose a great material because there's so much movement in ostrich hurl. Now the color I'm going to be using is going to be that natural gray. I'm going to actually cut off two of these and tie them on from the tip first. I have a lot of different colors of these and I use them for a lot of uh, various patterns, especially nymph patterns because of that movement that these little fibers allow. I've trimmed them. I'm holding them by the tips. So you can see those tips on the video. And I'm actually going to just trim back a little bit. So again, I'm tying them basically tip first. And I'm going to wrap them in just like you would any type of a hackle. It's going to give you almost a casual dress look. Really need a couple wraps to lock them in place. And once we have those in place, then we're just going to grab our crystal flash and bring it back. If you capture any of your uh, any of your ostrich hurl when you're doing that, that's okay because we're going to be covering it with a, with a little soft hackle anyway. Now at this point, once you have them lined up where you want them, I'm going to trim so it goes back not the whole way to the edge of the body, just before the end of the body. Let me just wiggle those around a little bit. I kind of want them shooting all over the place. Perfect. All right, then finally. For our soft hackle, I'm going to be using a hen skin from Clearwater Hackle. This is a gigantic skin. Let me zoom out so you have a better peek at this. So this is the entire hen skin. Uh, whenever you purchase these from Clearwater, you get a heck of a lot. I'm choosing Grizzly for this for a couple different reasons. Most importantly, I like that barring, that black to almost a white slash done barring. Uh, this is a, a great pattern to go with just a straight done if you have a done. However, this gives it more of that insect look to those legs. The other thing that's really nice about having a full saddle is that you can really just cater that feather to exactly what you need. When I'm typically tying soft tackles, I'm looking for smaller fibers from a bird such as a Hungarian partridge. But when I have this full hen, I can really find some, some feathers here with larger fibers, which will work out perfectly for this larger pattern. So I chose one feather. I'm going to prep it like I would any soft tackle. I'm going to remove all the fluff from the bottom on both sides. Next, with the front of the feather facing me, I'm going to remove the left side of those fibers. And then I'm going to hold on to the tip fibers and stroke everything in the opposite direction. So now I'll give you a look at it. You are now looking at the front of that feather. Let me zoom in for you again. So this is what it looks like. Then I'm going to lock it in place right here. So these are the tip fibers from both the left and the right side. Finally, I'm going to grab a pair of hackle pliers. I'm actually going to trim away the bottom part of the stem. I have um, a pair of hackle pliers from Stonfo. I get um, so many questions about these hackle pliers. A lot of my buddies who watch my videos really make fun of me because I tend to be holding these pliers up every time. And I really do that just because I want to make sure everyone can read. Um, these are called the Stonfo hackle pliers. They're the elite hackle pliers. Uh, they're just a wonderful plier simply because they just grab everything. They hold on to it really snug. I'm just going to lock that stem in place. And because this is a larger pattern, I will make more than my typical two to three turns. I'm going to make some around four turns. I just want to make sure those fibers are really getting out there. I'm going to try to make each turn in front of the last. But again, I really want those fibers to be, to be jutting out from that feather or from the stem of this feather. All right, 
I've locked that in place with about three wraps. Now I'm just going to release that stem and I'm going to pull the stem back towards the body of the fly and place a few locking wraps directly over that stem and towards the eye of the hook. I'm going to place one half hitch a whip finish remove my thread and then finally bend that stem back and trim the stem as well. Now you have a finished look at this shaky bealy. This is just a great all-around pattern. What's really amazing about this fly is not just how it looks right now. Hopefully you take a look at this and you say, yeah, that, that really looks pretty realistic in regards to an Isonechia or one of those slate drakes. However, this pattern really just seems to jump out once you put it underwater. The very first thing I did after I tied this fly, I dipped it in water and the rib really just began to take on a nice life. It gave it that really deep wine color and it really showed more of that body. The other thing that was really important about this was that crystal flash. Now that we have crystal flash underneath these soft hackle, hackle fibers, Whenever these fibers get wet, the soft hackle actually will go down and that crystal flash will almost remain up. Almost as if it's that shuck or that nymphal skin being torn apart. The same thing goes with this tail. All that tail will come together, those Coke de Leon fibers. However, that crystal flash will remain a little bit splayed and it will still give that indication that it could be a trailing shuck. So that the, the addition of these two, po uh, two pieces of crystal flash by Mr. Nicholas were extremely smart. And finally, the piece that I love probably the, the most is that ostrich hurl inside. I use that gray color, but what it does is two things. First, it gives some movement to the thorax of the fly. And second of all, it ensures that these soft hackle fibers are splaying out. Well, with all of that said, I do hope that you enjoyed the, the tying of this shaky bealy soft hackle fly. If you, have, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them directly on this YouTube page or you can email me directly at tkamisa at gmail.com. I'd like to first thank Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their N202 fly tying hook. That's their hopper and terrestrial hook. It was on a size 12 today. You can check out that hook and many more at allenflyfishing.com. Second, I'd also like to thank Clearwater Hackle for the use of that beautiful uh, hen hackle that was a grizzly hen hackle. You can check those out and many more at clearwaterhackle.com. Finally, to add just a little variation into this pattern, I want to basically stress that if you'd ever like to put a little hot spot on this one, a very easy thing to do is to grab some thread and tie a hot spot on directly over, over the uh, head of this fly. Now I recommend a lot of different colors, especially pink. This one right here is Unithread. The color is chartreuse. The size is 6 aught. Now it doesn't say fluorescent, though you could probably see just with these lights on how that color really seems to be jumping. But the best way to tell if a thread is fluorescent or not, grab your UV light, if you have a UV light for glues, and shine it directly on that thread. And it will absolutely glow. I'm not sure how great the video quality is, but I can assure you that this chartreuse colored unithread is absolutely glowing over here right now. So try that, check it out, and you will soon realize that you probably have a few fluorescent colors already in your collection. If not, I do recommend the unithread. Um, this chartreuse is a great color to simply add a little hot spot on as the head of this fly if you really like to fish hot spots. Well, with all that said, Thank you again, and I hope you did enjoy the tying of this soft-hackled fly, the shaky billy.